This is what every RF collector wants. It's the classic Butler Britain RF B-type chamois line leather flying helmet. Uh, B-type introduced in the 1930s was still in use during the Battle of Britain, hence its desirability, and was phased out by the C-type, which came along 41-ish. Um, the typical flying helmet of the period is a piece of leather headgear or cloth headgear, in the case of the Germans, they issued summer and winter flying kit. Some were leather, some of the German flying helmets were cloth. RF B-type, leather, chamois line it has these zipped ear things on either side inside there is where the big earphone radio receivers go on top of them you have a, a rubber buffer then it zips down the rubber buffers are very very rare so we'll take a look at them when we take it apart it's got poppered fixings all the way around it to take the strap of the flying goggles and also the earpieces are wired being that it's for radio communications and the wire comes out of the bottom down to a jack plug the jack plug eventually goes into the radio receiver in the aircraft on the side here you've got a detachable plug which attaches the voice piece of the oxygen mask to the earphones so when you, when you take the oxygen mask off you unclip that because that comes from the oxygen mask to the earphones because as well as it being an oxygen mask that clips to the oxygen bottle eventually it's also your receiver on there you've seen you've seen the classic battle of britain films they push it up they speak they can talk to other aircraft or ground control they put it down and they can effing blind to themselves and nobody listens to them. The, the mask is made of rubber. I'm not sure of the pattern because masks aren't really my thing. It's secured to this side by a clip and it just dangles like that when the pilot's out of the aircraft walking about. It's held on that side by two poppers. So we'll unpopper it. Just unpoppers like that and as I say it's dangling by the communications cord, which is held by that clip, which I'll try, I'll try and undo, but I don't think I'll be able to. Oh, that come apart easy enough. So we'll take a look at these as, as we come to them. The goggles are your standard angled shatterproof lenses. A ministry mark, as RF goggles should be. If you have a pair of these goggles, always look that they've got the air ministry stamp there if they haven't got the air ministry stamp there then they are post-war motorcyclist goggles so don't let anybody fool you into buying a pair of these goggles thinking the world war ii without the air ministry stamp there if they don't have the air ministry stamp then they are post-war motorcycle goggles because this style of goggles went on for many many years this particular one it's got a bar across the top now originally you had quite a long pair of flip down polarized lenses and what would happen is when the guy was looking about the sky if you had to look up into the sun he would flip the polarized lens down it, it acted like a pair of sunglasses so they would flip down they are always missing from these you never get them with this with the polarized lenses still attached after the war they took them off and threw them away and these went into post-war motorcycle use and then eventually the design would be copied by commercial people so if you don't, if you have a pair of these goggles and they don't have the air ministry stamp there, King's Crown, which we'll have a look at in closer detail, if you don't have a stamp there, then they are post-war motorcycle goggles. So made of brass, blackened, inside you have chamois leather. I'm not going to take these off because there's all sorts of poppers and buckles holding them together. But uh, the ear pieces of the helmet I'll unzip one side, inside we've got the black rubber protector pad, these are always missing from these helmets and the chances are if you have one of these helmets it won't have the earpieces in it neither. So one with the original rubbers 
the rubbers on their own as a pair sell for about 20 quid for original ones so you may you may get one of these where all of this is all squished in and dried and flat that's because the internals have been taken out a long time ago so we'll take it off and have a look at the inside of it always handy if you have a flying helmet far better than displaying it like that on a shelf dummy head sticking on the dummy head it always adds to the display display ability is that a word anyway inside you have typical chamois leather interior now what people like to see nowadays which this example doesn't have unfortunately most collectors buy flying helmets now that have nice crisp stamps inside and a date always helps as well and they always like them in large sizes unfortunately this one doesn't have any stampings inside it which means it can be a bit cheaper but one, one that has nice crisp stamps inside big makers mark big manufacturers mark will always fetch a premium price but b types are in demand anyway and also make sure the stitching isn't all split and drop into pieces any any flying helmet where the stitchings come apart or it's badly hauled really isn't worth getting so go for the completest one you can find so we'll have a look at just some typical typical examples and all of this belonged to one person it belonged to a bomber pilot during the war who lived on the isle of man after the war and um, he must have died his family sold the items to a military dealer in Carlisle. The military dealer sold it to a collector who sold it eventually back to the military dealer in Carlisle who sold it back out again to another collector and I bought it off that collector quite a long time ago. So it's been around, it's been back again. It has provenance. I do have the history of the guy but I don't know where I've put it at, at the moment. But it's all been together all its life. So we'll dismount that from the doobly and we'll have a look it's just, it's, it's just a nice example of the type so what we've got move up there this is a typical example of the mask on the front we've got the communications equipment again air ministry markings on there Contract numbers, stores numbers, AM King's Crown, we have off, push it up, on, off, you have the webbing straps with the buckles, these poppers hold it to one side of the flying helmet, that's the insides, that's where, that's where the oxygen comes up. That's the front of the receiver. This is the other side where you have the buckle that buckles it to the other side of the helmet. And you have comes down from the mask to the oxygen supply. And even that metal end piece with the bayonet fittings has its own RF contract number on it, manufacturer's marking. So somewhere on some list, that number will specify that that is that particular item of kit. And that's the jack plug that goes into the ear pieces of the helmet. And again, like most RAF pieces of kit, it's got its own unique stores number, which identifies that particular item as being RAF. So the helmet coming to this side of it this is one of the communication tubes that takes the cable up to the earphones inside the zippered section there and as we go around the back these are all the fixtures and fittings that hold the strap for the goggles in place this is the communications cable which goes to both sets of earphones that goes in the, the jack plug of the aircraft this is that bit that comes down, that goes into that bit on the mask. And again, it's got its own reference number on there. And this is one 
of the ear pieces that I've opened up. Inside we have the rare original rubber sponge buffer. And if I carefully peel that back, what we have in there, there's the earphones, one set of earphones, and again it's got I don't know if you can pick that up. There we are. Air Ministry King's Trial Mark and its own unique stores reference number. And they, these rubber things are always missing from these masks. As we come around the front, there's the bit there that goes over the bridge of the nose. Again, there's the clasp for holding part of the mask in place. Inside, it's got this really nice chamois lining. Again, it's buff buffered against the side of the head there. And this, this is where the sound comes through. That, that's that's the back of the plastic earphones that you've seen inside there. As we come round, we have the mask. It's got these angled, shatterproof lenses, brass, black and brass. That's the bar on the top for the polarized lenses. And as I say, always make sure, if I can get it right, probably not going to, well, maybe not. We'll see if we can do it a bit better, just bear with me a second. Can we, can we, can we? Probably not, I think. We'll see if we can. That's about the best I can do. So you have... Oh, there we are. You have a King's Crown there. AM, A Ministry. And the contractor numbers there. So always make sure yours is King Crown stamped and AM. Right there. If it doesn't have those markings on it, then I'm afraid what you've got is a pair of post-war motorcycle goggles. And again, inside. Probably not going to be able to see a good detail of it inside inside and chamois lined so that they buffer against the face and you have the strap that goes around the back so that's quite a nice RAF B type flying helmet goggles and a slightly later rubber oxygen mask from communications mask all belonged to the same man who lived on the Isle of Man.